Hello everyone! We're from Class 3 Group 6. In this video, we would like to present you how to make terrarium. Enjoy, Enjoy our video. video! Before we start our video, let us introduce ourselves. Start from me, I'm Chiara. My name is Julio Benjamin Abilio. My name is Manuel Rafia Fernanda. My name is Muhammad Arya Fadila. So what is terrarium? A terrarium is a sealed or open transparent container typically made of glass or plastic used to house plants and sometimes small organisms like insect or amphibians. It creates a miniature ecosystem that mimics natural environments, making it ideal for indoor gardening or educational purposes. There are some types of terrarium. The first one, glass terrarium, a sealed container that keeps humidity inside, perfect for tropical plants like ferns and moss. The second one, open terrarium, an open top set up with airflow, ideal for dry loving plants like succulent and cacti. The third one, air plant terrarium, uses no soil, air plants are placed on decker and misted regularly. Number four, desert terrarium, dry and sandy, made for small cacti and drought tolerant plants. And the last one, forest terrarium, moist and shaded, suited for woodland plants like ivy and mini orchids. A terrarium is useful for several purposes, both practical and decorative. It serves a low-maintenance indoor garden, ideal for people with limited space or time. It's also used for educational purposes, helping to demonstrate ecosystem, plant growth, and the water cycle. Terrariums can be decorative pieces, bringing a touch of nature indoors and enhancing interior aesthetics. In some cases, they're also used to house a small organism like insect or amphibians, creating a controlled habitat. Overall, terrariums are valued for being compact, easy to care for, and feasibly appealing. So the first one is to put batu pancawarna or five colored stone into the terrarium. Five colored stone is used at the bottom of terrarium as a drainage layer to prevent root rot and add natural color and texture for decoration. Charcoal is used in the bottom layer of a terrarium to absorb toxin odors and excess moisture. It keeps the environment clean and help prevent mold and root rot by acting as a natural purifier for the soil and water inside the terrarium. Next one is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is used to hold moisture and keep the terrarium humid. It's placed on top of rocks and ch or charcoal to stop the soil from falling down. We use tweezer in here to place it neatly and spread it out just enough so it looks natural. So the usage of putting mixed soil, mixing soil in terrarium helps create the right balance of nutrition, drainage, and moisture for plant growth. It ensures the soil suits the needs of specific plants like sandy soil for succulent and rich moist soil for ferns while also preventing root rot by improving water flow. The plant is planted using a small spoon for better control and precision. Make sure the roots are fully placed into the soil to ensure healthy ground. Worms are nature recycle. Worms such as red wrigglers or earthworms are nature recycled. In terrarium, they aerate the soil. They brewing great air channels, promoting healthy root growth for plants. And also, they compost organic matters. Worm break down decaying leaf and waste, enriching the substitutes with nutrients. And also, they support ecosystem balance. They help maintain a clean environment by consuming organic debris and reducing the risk of mold or harmful bacteria. This one, moss. Moss is used to cover the soil surface so it doesn't dry out too fast. The fresh green color also makes the room look like a little forest. We use tweezers in this also to place the moss and pack it close together so it looks neat and clean. The last step is you can decorate your terrarium and then after that, you're done!
the condition of our terrarium at week one. It fresh and craving. In the first week, the terrarium looked fresh and full of life. The plants were green, healthy, and stood upright. All parts of the ecosystem were alive and active. The cricket was moving around energetically, and the worms are actively burrowing the soil. The environment felt balanced, moist, and lively, a sign that ecosystem was working well. And for the week 2, in the second week, some plants began to yellow, and a few started to wither or die. The cricket looked like less active and seems weak or unpressed. The overall look of the terrarium changed. It feels less vibrant and less healthy. This change suggests the ecosystem might be starting to go out of balance. The terrarium worked at first but fell after two weeks, showing the need for balance of CO2, plain choice, and nutrient cycles. Like industrial system, small ecosystem need careful planning. Next time, use suitable plants and add microbes and stabilize before sealing. Grading and maintaining a terrarium teaches valuable lessons related to real-world industries. It introduces sustainability by showing how natural cycles work efficiently in a closed system. The design process develops creativity and planning skills, similar to product and packaging design in industry. Terrariums also connect to green innovation, such as urban farming and eco-technology. Additionally, they offer small businesses opportunities in the creative and home decor sectors. Taking care of a terrarium builds responsibility, patience, and problem problem solving skills useful in many professional fields. And that's how we make our terrarium. Thank, Thank you for watching. watching. Bye.